Lord. Church, if you are there, I said, Praise the Lord. Wonderful to be together tonight. Are you happy you are here tonight? And those who are coming for the first time, I welcome you afresh again in Jesus' name. I will pray that the Bible study tonight will enrich every life, empower everyone, make you excited to serve the Lord. I pray the revelation of the word will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you because this is the backbone of the church and the backbone of the Christian. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you enlighten everyone, Amen. edify everyone. Put something within everyone that will make us excited in living for you in Jesus' name. I will pray it will not be a dull time, a dull fellowship. It will be an exciting fellowship in the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Bless all of us who are here. Our fathers, our mothers, our pastors, our leaders, our ministers, our workers, all the members, all the invitees, our youths, our children. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Keep us awake and help us, Lord, to learn everything you have for us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You must give me another amen before sitting down. Amen. God bless you. We're coming to gospel according to St. John. We've been in the gospel according to St. John for some time now, actually for some months, and we're now in chapter 17. Of all the chapters in John, of all the chapters in the New Testament, this chapter is very peculiar. This chapter is very special and unique. Why? Because this records the prayer of Jesus Christ. And it is so deep, it's so rich, it's so solemn, it's so sacred that when people read the prayer, they, they are getting into what the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is speaking to the Heavenly Father. And it's like uh, we're listening to him and we're watching him as he talks to the Heavenly Father. He talks about himself. He talks about the Father. He talks about the disciples. And he talks about the need of the world. He brings everything together in this prayer. And it's like uh, we're kneeling down and then we're listening to him, Jesus Christ, talking to the Father. Look at what I'm talking about. It's in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Stop there for a moment. It was here on earth. It was about to go to heaven. And heaven had been on his heart, on his mind, every time. And all these disciples, he got them converted, and he got them transformed, and he lifted up their minds to heaven. And he was the one, if you remember, that taught the disciples when you pray, say, Our Father, where? Our Father, which art in heaven. And he spoke to everyone, saying that, God was his father, and when he rose from the dead, he said, I go to my father, I go to your father, I go to my God, I go to your God. And he makes God so near, and he makes God so precious, and he gives us the relationship between sons and father, and he, the unique son of God, the only begotten son of God, is now talking to the father. And as you see the solemnity, you see the secretness, you see the prayer, it shows you to how to approach the heavenly father now. Now that you are born again, you are a child of God, it shows you how you too can approach the Heavenly Father. But look at this, I'm reading from verse 1 again, it says, These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And then he said, Father, he said, Father, and there's no one that knew the Father like Jesus. No one knew God like Jesus. And to anyone that the, that the Lord will reveal, reveal, that he will reveal the Father to, he says, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son that may also glorify thee. And so you see what we're reading about in uh, John chapter 17 uh, is the prayer, the solemn prayer, the secret prayer, the supernatural prayer of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, unto the Heavenly Father. Christ's prayer 
was to God, to the Heavenly Father. Not to live that in this prayer that is recorded, he spoke about the Father, he spoke about the Son, he spoke about the church, he spoke about the world, and then he gave the reason why he's praying this prayer. I've titled the message tonight from verse 1 to verse 12, Christ's as high priestly prayer for all his disciples. Christ's high priestly prayer for all his disciples. What does that mean? He was praying as a high priest. As a high priest of a profession. He was praying as the one that was going to make the final sacrifice. And that sacrifice he'll present to the heavenly father. And then he prays for the people who were already partakers of his salvation. And those who were the partakers of the salvation. Look at verse 9. So you understand what we are talking about? That this is the prayer he prayed for his own disciples who already were saved, who already were following him, who already were disciples, who already had their sins forgiven, and he had given them the power and the grace to go and sin no more. Look at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Maybe that was surprise someone there he prayed for the disciples in particular he prayed for us believers in particular in this chapter 17 in uh, at the end when he'll be on the cross he's going to pray for the world forgive them for they know not what they do but here he's praying for the church he's praying for you I said he's praying for us. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which shall which thou art given me for they are thine they are thine they do not belong to the world these were children of god already were saved already and their names were written in heaven but it's not only that look at verse 20 as we read verse 20 it says neither pray i for these alone it says my prayer is not limited to these initial disciples it's not limited to these initial followers it's not limited to these who are just following me neither pray i for these alone but for them also here is where i'm included i said here is why i am included it says for them also which shall believe on me through their word the people that shall believe oh did you believe you read the gospel going to saint john and you believe and you had the message maybe from matthew and you believe you had the message somebody was preaching on acts of the apostles and you believe or maybe somebody was preaching through romans romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if you believe in your heart and you confess that jesus christ is the lord and then you believe for righteousness and salvation thou shalt be saved and then you believe jesus said i'm praying for my own disciples not only that i'm praying for all the other disciples all the other followers that will believe through their word and that's why this prayer includes you includes me look at the disciple the disciples had heard him when he prayed that's why they recorded it down they called god father and he called himself son the prayer emphasizes the deep relationship between christ the son and god the father in fact as you think about jesus christ talking about the father and himself talking about himself as son you find that reveal come to john chapter one john chapter one i'm reading here from verse 18 john chapter one verse 18 and see how familiarly he speaks about the father the son and the father he tells us in john chapter one verse 18 he says no man has seen god at any time the only begotten son he says, this is the one that can reveal the Father like no other person can, the only begotten Son, which is in heaven, which is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. You see that? He talks about God as Father, and he talks about himself as son you're going to find that throughout the gospel according to saint john because 
this was the relationship he kept with the father and this relationship had begun even before the world began because he is the everlasting father and he is the eternal son and when you bring both together you have him eternal everlasting father and then you have jesus christ the everlasting son i'm coming to john chapter 3 verse 34 john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 34 it says in verse 34 for he to whom for he whom god has said speaketh the words of god and then it says for god giveth him not the spirit by measure he giveth not the spirit by measure unto him look at this it says the father loveth who the son is always making it's always declaring to the people you need to understand the relationship between god and christ he is the son and then god is the father the father loves the son and has given how many things all things unto his son is giving him everything that he is the son has total authority as final authority as complete authority and the father has complete love and authority as well we're coming to john chapter 5 john chapter 5 god is father and jesus christ is son god is the eternal father and uh, jesus is the everlasting son we're coming to john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 john chapter 5 verse 19 it says uh, he says then answered jesus and said unto them verily verily i say unto you that the son can do nothing of himself he chooses to be so subservient to the father and to be so united with the father and to be so much under the control of the father that he decided when he came to earth even though he has been eternal himself everlasting himself yet when he came to the earth he made himself of no reputation and it says here the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do that is what he himself uh, does and then he says whatsoever the father does that's what the son also does and so you see that relationship between the father and the son that he will do nothing except what the father will approve of he'll do nothing except what the father will instruct to do he'll do nothing except what the father will allow him to do i'm coming to chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 27 we're looking at john chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 27 it says in verse 27 labor not for the meat which perishes but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which look at this now the son of man shall give unto you for him as god the father sealed he mentions the son he mentions the father and it's so important because when you come to john chapter 17 and then you see the prayer and you read the prayer and you learn from the revelation of what jesus christ was saying you will see the emphasis on the father you see the emphasis on the son and you see the revelation of the relationship between the father and the son you see the love you see the unity you'll see the obedience of the son to the father and you see the authority of the father over the son we're coming to john chapter 8 in john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 28 john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 28 then said they unto him who art thou and jesus says unto them even the same which i told you that i told you uh, before and then he goes on to say in uh, verse uh, 20 verse uh, 26 in verse uh, 29 rather uh, let me get my verse here reading from chapter which chapter did i tell you chapter 8 and i'm looking at verse 28 it says in verse 28 then said jesus unto them 
water ye when ye have lifted up the son of man you see again he refers to himself as the son of man he says then you will know shall you know that i am he and that i do nothing and that i do nothing of myself but as the father as i taught me even so i speak uh, these things again you will see that he emphasizes the very fact that he is the son of god and then the god himself is the father we're coming to chapter 10 as we come to chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 36 john chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 36 it says see ye of him whom the father as uh, appointed whom the father as sanctified whom the father as saint uh, do you say of him uh, of whom the father as sent into the world that that blasphemous because i said i am the son of god he said i am the son of god and god is my father you see the repetition every time uh, and now we come to chapter 14 uh, and i'm reading from verse 13 chapter 14 uh, i'm reading from verse 13 again you emphasize the fact that God is father and he is the son in John chapter 14 verse 13 it says whatever ye shall ask in my name that I will do that the father may be glorified in the son we're coming back now to the beginning of uh, chapter 17 in chapter 17 uh, as we look at uh, God uh, that uh, this Christ high priestly prayer for all his disciples he tells us here about god and about himself come back to chapter 17 reading from verse 1 he says this was big jesus and uh, he um, and uh, liking and he lifted up his uh, eyes to heaven and he said father glory father uh, the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee you see that's uh, the way he prayed as he lifted up his eyes and he spoke to the father and he wants us to understand that relationship that he had with the father and in this uh, prayer we're reading i said from chapter 1 chapter 17 uh, verse 1 to verse 12. there are three things we're looking at today number one the prayer of the son before his father the prayer of the son that's the prayer of christ the son of god the son of man the one who died for us on the cross of calvary the prayer of the son before his father point number two the proof of the salvation of his followers there are many people that do not understand that jesus christ actually gives salvation give forgiveness give redemption to those uh, followers while he was still here on earth but the bible makes it very clear you are going to see from the prayer of jesus but what he was telling the father concerning these disciples that they were saved and they were real children of god point number two the proof of the salvation of his followers point number three the protection through the son by the father the protection of those believers the protection of those followers the protection of the children of god the protection of the people that know the lord the protection through the son by the father i come to point number one point number one the prayer of the son before the father we're coming to chapter 17 chapter 17 and i'm reading again from verse one all through to verse five the prayer christ prayed the prayer the son of god prayed the prayer our savior prayed unto the father here is the beginning he says uh, uh, they, they then speak uh, these words of jesus and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee you see the prayer was prayed here he wanted glory from the father 
appreciation from the father exaltation from the father according to the covenant they are together the father and the son that the glory will come from the father and it will come upon the son it says as thou was saint as thou as I given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him he said this is the covenant you made with me and this is the promise you gave me that all those you give me i will give eternal life unto them in verse 3 and it says and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god it says this is what my disciples have known they know that you are the only true god they're not going to serve any other god and they know that you have sent me and they have eternal life and it says this is life abundant life this is life eternal life this is life everlasting life that they might know thee as the true god and jesus christ whom thou hast said you have sent me and they know that already it says in verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do his mind was always on that work that the father had given him to do and he said father i concentrated on it i focused on it and i finished the work that you gave me to do and now oh father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which i had with thee before the foundation of the world before the found before the beginning you know, of the world and so you see that prayer the prayer of the son before the father and uh, he lifted up his eyes unto he to heaven and he prayed to the father we're coming to john chapter 11 and see that that was the sabbath when he was talking to the father he looked at heaven he looked to heaven and he looked to the father and he prayed having the assurance that whatever he prayed that the father always answered him look at chapter 11 reading from verse 41 then they took away the stone tonight you'll take away that stone and whatever hinders answers to prayer you'll take it away tonight in jesus name and when you do when you do god will answer our prayer and he roll everything the way out of your life in jesus name and then it says it said they rolled away the stone from the place where the stone where the dead was laid and jesus lifted up his eyes and said tell me the word father he lifted up his eyes and then he was going to pray to the father he was going to ask that dead lazarus will come forth and so he said father i thank thee that thou has heard me yes not he had not even made the request he had not even made the prayer and he said i thank you father because that was hurt me before we pray we know because god is faithful because god is love because god can do all things we know already he has answered us he has answered me tonight and he has answered jesus on your behalf tonight in jesus name and I knew that thou hearest me always. How often did the Father hear the Son? How often did the Father answer the Son? And if the Son is praying for you tonight, if Jesus, your Savior, your Lord is praying for you tonight, will he be answered? Of course, it's going to be answered because he says, and I know, I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stood by, I said it uh, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. But the point is, he lifted up his eyes and then he called to the father. And he was going to ask the father for Lazarus to come forth. After he had said that, he said, Lazarus, come forth. What happened? He came forth like you are going to come forth tonight. The power of God always is always activated when the Son prays, when the Son talks to the Heavenly Father. We're looking at John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 23. And it says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. The hour is come. 
And that's what he was saying in chapter 17. He said, now, this is the hour. Father, glorify your son. And the same thing he told them here. He said, the hour has come. Isn't it wonderful for you to know when your hour actually comes? When the hour for answered prayer, when it comes. When the hour to achieve something, when it comes. When the hour to get something done, when it comes. When the hour, the hour of accomplishment. And the hour of breakthrough. And the hour of the will of God. And the hour of whatever God has uh, decided he will do. Ordained he will do. That we know the hour has come in the case of jesus he knew the hour if you read your bible very well there are times they told him to do something he'll say no my hour has not come the mother will say how about doing this my hour has not come and then the brothers will say how about going to jerusalem at this time of the field he said my hour has not come but now at this time he knew that his hour has come the hour of doing the will of God and the hour of finalizing the redemptive work that the Father had given him to do, had sent him to do here on earth. And it's good for you when your hour comes and you know that this is your hour. I'm reading from John and I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 13, verse 1. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew see that when jesus knew that his hour was come that he should uh, depart out of the world unto unto the father he knew when the hour came the hour that he should leave the earth and then go to the father having loved the son which were in the world he loved them even until the end and i say including us yeah he will love you love you to the end it says, having loved the son, which one in the world, he loved them to the end. We're looking at verse 31, verse 31 of that chapter 13. It says, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. Now, the son of man is glorified. And God, the Father, is glorified in him. And he says, if God be glorified in him, then shall God also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. He said, there's not going to be any delay. That's why he prayed in chapter 17. And he said, Father, glorify thy son with thine own self as you promised me before. Where was that promise? How did he know that the Father will glorify him? And what kind of glory was the Father going to show unto the Son? We're coming to Psalm 2. In Psalm 2, I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 2, we're reading from verse 6. So you will see what the Father had said about the Son. And what the Father was going to do concerning him the son and what the father was going to give unto the son was going to actually give the world to be redeemed by the lord jesus christ and jesus said christ said now the hour has come he was about to go to the cross of calvary he was about to be the sacrificial lamb the passover lamb he was about to make the atonement for the sins of the whole world that's why he said now the hour has come and then the work will be totally finished come to some you and i'm reading from verse 6 it says yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion that's the father talking about the son that's god talking about the lord jesus christ that's the almighty talking about the messiah that i have set him upon my holy hill of zion and he'll be king look at this i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my tell me Old Testament, Old Testament, thou art my son. You see, being the son of God is not something, it's not an afterthought. It's not like, you know, okay, Jesus called himself son of God, son of God, son of man, son of man. And since he called himself son of God, son of man, so okay, God eventually agreed, okay, that's what you want to call yourself. Not at all. It had been already agreed in heaven. And here it says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. It's the decree of heaven. The Lord 
God has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And how is Christ to be glorified? Remember, we're following through the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, Glorify me with thine own self, of the glory which I had with you before the world began. Look at verse 8. Tell me verse 8 there. Ask of me, ask of me. The Lord Jesus Christ actually has ownership of the whole world because he sacrificed to redeem the whole world. He says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And then he says, And the and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession and so the uttermost part of the earth i have a far away in the, from jerusalem we are here in africa here in that city here in that country the lord has given everything to the lord jesus christ that's why he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature whosoever anyone that believes any part of the world they'll be saved and they'll be prepared for heaven in jesus name how did Jesus Christ eventually have this glory? How did he have this inheritance? How did he have this that the Father had promised him? We're looking at Philippians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, and I'm reading him from verse 5. It tells us in Philippians chapter 2, reading here from verse 5, here is the Lord Jesus Christ. See what he did see his sacrifice and see his submission and see the substitutionary death that he gave on the cross of calvary and as a result of that that glory came that exaltation came and that approval from heaven came look at this in philippians chapter 2 verse 5 it says let this might be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god that he is, he was equal with the father i and my father are one and it wasn't something was snatching it wasn't something he was uh, robbing or taking away from god, from god without his consent he said he thought it not robbery to be equal with god but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon him the form of his servant and he was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself you see what christ has done you see what christ did so that he could sacrifice his life for you for me for the world at calvary and then he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god has also tell me highly exalted him because of that which he did because he gave himself and because he voluntarily did that it says because of that god the father has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus tell me every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth and that every 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 tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father the glory of god the father and so that's what christ has done and what he has done is to sacrifice himself on the cross of calvary that's why he said the hour has come is the hour of the final obedience at the cross of calvary shedding his blood so that whosoever will call on the name of the lord will be saved and if you have not been saved tonight is the night of your salvation and if you are saved already tonight, you appreciate the salvation the Lord has given you more than ever before. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 2. Reading from verse 8. It says that thou hast put all things, all things in subjection under his feet. He has put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection 
under him he left nothing that is uh, that is not put under him but now we we'll see him we we'll see not yet all things under him look at that he said normally by promise normally by covenant everything is under the feet of the lord jesus christ and eventually we're going to see that because every tongue is going to confess that jesus is lord to the glory of the father but you see there's still some unbelievers that are outside they have not come under the control of christ that's why it says normally the father has given him everything he gives him authority and he's going to rule and he's going to reign over the whole universe but at present at the present day there are people who have not submitted themselves unto Christ they will come they be submissive to Christ it says in verse 9 but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death that is when he came to this world he only gave up his authority and his power but we see him now crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for how many people for every man that means that the death wish should have died the lord jesus christ has tasted that and now you can come and if you call upon the name of the lord you will be saved i thought you'll say amen yeah. we're coming to first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 4 first john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 4 it says for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever whosoever a boy a girl a young person an older person whosoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world tell me even our faith the one who does not overcome is because he doesn't have faith he says you know the sins are too terrible and the defilements they're so terrible and the temptation is so great i cannot overcome because he says he cannot he cannot but i can i said i can i can do all things through christ so strengthens me every temptation you can overcome every trial you can overcome every sin you can overcome because whosoever is born of god overcomes the world this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith look at verse 5 who is he who is he that overcomes the world but he that believeth that jesus is the son of god as you come to the lord say lord i believe you are the son of god you are the son of god that sacrificed and gave yourself for me on the cross of calvary you are going to be saved and then you will have the victory i said you will have the victory you know jesus christ in his prayer was talking about eternal life he said this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god look at verse 13 verse 13 these things have i reaching unto you that believe on the name of the son of god this is have i reaching unto you that believe i pray everyone here will believe I said everyone here today will believe. It says, these things have I reached unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that she have, what do you have? That she may know that she have, I said, what do you have? Eternal life, and that he, and that uh, ye may believe on the name of the Son of God of god come to verse 18 there in verse 18 look at this in verse 18 we know thank god i know i said thank god i know you see there's some people that do not know they say well i don't know whether i'm you know an overcomer i don't know whether i'm saved or not i don't know whether i'm a child of god or, or not you can know as you believe on the lord jesus christ and then you have that revelation of the spirit of god because the spirit of god bears witness in your heart that you are now a child of god that's why it says we know that whosoever 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 who is whosoever anyone everyone as you believe we know that whosoever is born of god tell me tell me tell me say it again 
sin is not. There are some people that say, you know, I cannot overcome sin. I cannot, uh, you know, deal without sinning. And then every Sunday they go to confess. We have done what we, have, we shouldn't have done. We have not done what we should have done. We are all sinners. No, we are not all sinners. There are some people that know God and they don't sin. I said there are some people that know God and they don't sin. They leave the sin business alone because the life of Christ comes into them and the life of righteousness comes into them. That's why it says we know that whosoever, whosoever is born of God sinneth not and that he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And it says he so keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. I thought you'd say amen. amen. That wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness, in the wicked one. And then he tells us in verse 20, look at verse 20 here. And it says, we know that the son of God is come and he has given he has given us an understanding the son of god has come the moment you repent of your sin and the moment you believe on the lord he has given us an understanding that we may know that him that is true and we are that we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ listen to this this is the true god and uh, eternal life this is the true god and eternal life we're coming back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 you see the prayer of the lord jesus christ what he was telling the father and he told he told the father i'm reading now from john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 5 john chapter 17 verse 5 it says and now O father glorify thou me with the same with thine own self with the with the glory which i add with thee tell me the rest before the world was he said i had glory with you i had glory with you before the world began before the world began we're looking at some nighty and i'm reading from verse two some nighty verse two when it says before the world began so that you will understand that jesus christ is everlasting jesus christ is eternal it's not that jesus just came he had been in heaven from all eternity we're looking at some nighty and i'm reading from verse two it says before the mountains were were brought forth or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art god so when he said i be with you and glory with you i have honor with you i have majesty with you before the world was that means from all eternity we're coming to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 24 john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 24 it says in verse 24 father a will that those that they uh, also whom thou hast given me may be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou hast loved me tell me before the foundation of the world and so you know that jesus christ was not created he's been there from all eternity before the foundation of the world and now that was going back to the father and going back to heaven it was asking the father glorify me with the glory that i had with you before the world began so that i can resume that glory again as i go back to heaven that's part of the prayer we're coming back to uh, john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 6 now point number two the proof of the salvation of his followers the proof of the salvation of his followers there are many people that you know uh, sometimes they are asking the question those disciples of christ that are following christ were they actually born again 
Were they saved? Did they have their names in heaven? Did they have the same salvation we have now? Because Jesus Christ had not got to Calvary yet. Could anybody be saved? Could anybody be born again? And there are some people that will say, no, they were not born again. They didn't know Jesus Christ as Savior. Only after he died and went to the cross, and that's the time they knew the Lord as Savior. Let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ himself is saying concerning them. The proof of their salvation, those followers of Christ, those disciples of Christ, those people that left everything and they turned their back on the world and they trusted in Christ, relied on Christ, believed in Christ and accepted Christ and they fully gave themselves unreservedly unto Christ. Let's see what Christ himself says about them. I'm reading from John chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 6. It says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world you see that you gave them to me out of the world you called them out of the world and then he goes on to say and thou gavest them to me and they were thine and now it says and they have kept thy word unbelievers cannot do that those who are not saved cannot do that. They were saved. They were children of God. And it says they have kept your word. It says in verse 7, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast, thou hast given me are of thee. They have known that everything that uh, is of thee, you have given unto me. They were different from the Pharisees. They were different from the Sadducees. They were different from the people of the world. Look at verse 8. For I have given unto them the words that thou gavest me. And they have received them. You see that? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gave the word unto them. They didn't reject the word. They didn't turn away from the word. They received the word of God. It says they have received them and they have known, they have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. They have believed. These were believers, not unbelievers. Look at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. That already distinguishes them differentiates them and make them dif made them different from the people of the world i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine they are thine they are your sons and daughters you have given them unto me and it says in verse 10 and all mine are thine and thine are mine and i am glorified in them what is saved were they born again? Did they belong to God? Of course they did. We're looking at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I read from verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see all those people who left darkness behind they left their sins behind. They left all their, even their trade, they left everything behind. And they followed Jesus Christ unreservedly. He said, they are my sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. And he says, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. They were saved. They had eternal life. He says, I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then he says, my father, which gave them me, my father has given them to me, they belong to me, is greater than all. And then he says uh, over here in this uh, verse 29, uh, and he says, no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. They belong to the Lord. Look at John chapter 15. The proof of the salvation of these followers of Christ. These were not sinners anymore. Not even backsliders. These were people that Christ had chosen out of the world. And they belonged to the Lord. Completely to the Lord. Look at chapter 15 verse 19. It says, if he were of the world... The world would love his own. 
He was saying, you are not of the world. Because if you were of the world, the world would love its own. And then he goes on to say, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Did they belong to the world? Did they belong to Christ? Yes. Were they saved? Yes. Were they born again? It says, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. And we're coming to chapter 17 of John. John chapter, let, let me read chapter 15 first. Chapter 15 verse 3. Chapter 15 verse 3. Telling us that these ones, they have been converted. These ones, their lives have turned around. These ones, their lives have changed. And it says in chapter 15 verse 3, it says, Now, Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The Lord cleansed them, the Lord washed them, the Lord purged them, and the Lord transformed their lives. And he says, now ye are clean. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. We're reading from chapter 17 and verse 14. Chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 14. It tells us in verse 14, it says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because, because, because of what? They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. They are not of the world. That means they were born again already. That means they were new creatures already. That means they belong to Christ, to the kingdom of God already. Look at verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them, protect them from the evil. And keep them away from evil. So that they will not be of the world. Look at, look at verse 16. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Obviously, they were born again. Obviously, they were real children of God. Come to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 20. Luke chapter 10. We're reading from verse 20. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, here is, you know, here is proof that these ones, fathers of Christ, disciples of Christ, they were really and truly born again. It says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice now, that the spirits are subject unto you. Then it says, but rejoice because your names, rejoice rather, rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Reaching the book of life in heaven. If somebody is not saved, can, he, can his name be in the book of life in heaven? No. These people were saved. They were children of God. They had real salvation. The kind of salvation you have, the kind of salvation we have today, that's the kind of salvation they had because they accepted the word of God. They received the word of God and that word of God worked in their lives. And today, whosoever will receive, whosoever will accept the word of God that Jesus Christ is Savior and Jesus is the only Savior, that person will be saved saved and then his life will be turned around we're looking at uh, first thessalonians chapter 2 first thessalonians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 13 in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 it says for this cause also thank we god without ceasing because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The word of God that you will receive as you turn away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says that word works effectually, works mightily, and works effectively in everyone that believes. And those people, they believe the word of God. And the word of God works in them. And the word of God transformed and changed their lives. The same way it is changing lives today. And I pray that your neighbors will see that you have received the word of God and your life has totally changed. 
look at first john chapter 4 first john chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 14 first john chapter 4 we're reading from verse 14 it says and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world we've seen it we've heard of it we've read it and we do believe and we testify and we proclaim that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world whosoever whosoever there's no discrimination as you see that jesus christ has died on the cross of calvary and say he died for me that's for me he died that's for me he shed his blood that's for me he paid the price of uh, the glorious salvation and it's for whosoever whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwells in him and he in god and we have known and believed we have known and believed thank god i know thank god i believe we have known and we believe the love that god has uh, that he has said uh, to us that god is love and that he that dwells in love dwells in god and god in him hebrews chapter 7 hebrews chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 25 in hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 hebrews 7 verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost whosoever you are is able to save however far you've gone in sin is able to save however the cord and the habit of sin has tied you up is able to save because he is christ because he is savior because he is redeemer and he has paid the price of that salvation for everyone that's why it says wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them he ever leave it to make intercession for them you remember what i read to you already in john chapter 17 verse 9 that i pray for them i pray not for the world it's making intercession for us for everyone that believes of the lord jesus christ is making that intercession and is making that prayer and because of that prayer as you key into that prayer as you accept that prayer as you believe that that is for me christ that for me and christ is praying for me it will save you and then after you are saved it will keep you in that salvation for such an high priest became us who is holy and harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens is praying for you look at chapter 9 of hebrews hebrews chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 24 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 24 it says for christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us to appear in the presence of god for us it's not the presence of god and he appears for you he appears for everyone that believes on him and as you believe you are going to see that manifestation of faith in christ that your life will totally turn around in jesus name the proof of the salvation of his followers they were saved and if you are follower today salvation comes to you you have done your sin and you embrace the Savior, salvation comes to you. And you keep on walking with the Lord and you will not turn back away from Him. Salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when it says whosoever, that means any part of the world, to the uttermost part of the earth, as you call on the name of the Lord, salvation, conversion, transformation, a new life, eternal life will come unto you. And then your neighbors will see it's a new man, it's a new woman. Things are different now. All things have passed away and all things have become new. If if it has not happened it's going to happen yeah. to you it will happen yeah. 
if it has happened already there will be a great assurance a deeper assurance in your heart i belong to christ i said i belong to christ i said i belong to christ and my neighbors will see and all my friends will see and then the power of the people that belong to christ that power will be manifested in your life in jesus name we come to point number three now our protection through the son by the father our protection he protects us he preserves us and so we can remain in the kingdom after we have come to know the lord point number three our protection through the son by the father we're looking at john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 11 john chapter 17 verse 11 it says and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come unto thee holy father Holy Father, righteous Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. It says, keep them, protect them, preserve them so that they will not fall. Preserve, preserve them so that they will not sin. Look at verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. While I was with them, present with them, I kept them in thy name. Now I am coming to you. I'm no more going to be with them physically. That's why I'm praying to you that you will keep them. It says, those that thou, uh, that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. The Father has given you to the Son. The Father has given it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you abide in Him, you will not be lost. As you consecrate more to Him, you will not be lost. As God gives you the grace to resist temptation, you will not be lost in Jesus' name. He said, those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. Nobody there will be a daughter of perdition. You'll not be a son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Number one here we'll see preservation from sin and defilement. Preservation from sin and defilement. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I kept them, I kept them while I was with them. I kept them from sin, I kept them from defilement. I'm looking at Psalm 19. In Psalm 19, I'm reading from verse 13. He is the one that can keep us. Temptation will come, he'll keep us. Trials will come, he'll keep us. And all the pollutions of the world try to come into our lives, it will keep you in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Psalm 19 and i'm reading from verse 13 psalm 19 verse 13 keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins keep back thy servant keep back the follower of christ keep back the child of god keep back those who believe in you keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me let them not have dominion over me. That's the prayer you're praying. You're saying, I know you can keep me. I know you can secure me. I know you can protect me. I know you can so keep me that the sins of the world, defilement of the world, will not touch my life. And you keep me so that they'll not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great, from that great transgression. I look at Psalm 119, Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 119, reading from verse 9. Reading from verse 9. 119, verse 9. Here it tells us, where, where with thou shall a young man cleanse his way? It says, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. How do I preserve from sin? Temptation comes and say no. 
trials come and say, I'm not going to fall, and all those defiling things in the world, they come against your life. You say, Jesus is by my side, and Jesus is living with, within me, and is going to keep me. And you remember the word of God. It says, with my whole heart have I sought thee, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You will not sin. Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We come to the Lord. We become dead to sin. We come to the Lord and we're totally separated from sin. We come to the Lord and there's a change of life. There's a transformation. And that transformation makes us righteous. And then we are kept away from sinning. It tells us Romans chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, for he that is dead is free from sin. Free from sin. Free from sin. Anybody there free from sin? The Lord will make you free. The Lord will keep you free. Uh, you have testimonies of freedom in Jesus' name. Uh, look at look at verse eleven. Likewise, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Reckon yourself. Accept it yourself. Believe it for yourself. Know that because you are saved, because you are a child of God, you are dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says in verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. If it comes, you stand and say, Where are you coming? What are you doing? This one, this is the temple of God. Sin cannot enter here anymore. I said, sin will not enter here anymore. Uh, you will not be saying, temptation has come again. Uh, they want to pull me down. They want to draw me down. They want me to fall. Uh -uh. That's a conqueror does not talk like that. Because now you are more than a conqueror. And when it comes to say no, because that heaven, you're going to get there in Jesus' name. That's why it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey each in the lusts thereof. And then it tells us in verse 18, look at verse 18, it says, being them made free from sin. Somebody there, are you free from sin? Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. It says, but now, now, at this very time, but now, be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Number one, preservation from sin and defilement. Number two protection by our savior and deliverer protection by our savior and deliverer jesus is our savior jesus is our deliverer and he'll protect you from every evil i said he'll protect you from every evil evil spirit under your feet satanic attack under your feet hey, look at what he said look at what he said in john chapter 17 verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come unto thee holy father holy father keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while i was with them while I was with them in the world, I kept them through thy name, in thy name, those that thou gavest me. It says, I have kept them, I have kept, and none of them is lost. You will not be lost to the devil. He will not get you again. He will not possess you again. He will not, you will not be his property anymore. 
and look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. I, I, I should have read from verse 3, but let me read. Let me back up to verse 1 because the whole thing is good. It's talking about the believer, the one that dwells in the Lord, the one that dwells under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Satan cannot catch you there. Evil spirit cannot catch you there. Powers of darkness cannot catch you there. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, somebody shall surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me. He shall cover me with his feathers under his wings shall i trust i is the truth i shall be my shield and my buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that wasted in darkness or not for the, uh, the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come near thee let me read that again a thousand shall fall by my side ah say it for yourself and ten thousand by my right hand but it shall not come near me it shall not come near me you are more than a conqueror. Yeah. You are an overcomer. Yeah. And the power of the Lord will keep you. Yeah. He'll keep you from Satan. Yeah. Keep you from evil spirit. Yeah. Keep from, from evil power. Yeah. And then it says, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because he has said his Lord, because thou hast made the Lord, which is uh, my refuge. Uh, even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee to keep who i said to keep who to keep thee in all thy ways thou shalt bear it says they shall bear thee up in their hands and lest thou dash thy foot against a stone it says thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the foot because thou because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him he is our savior he is our deliverer and he protects the people he has saved and he keeps on delivering us i will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me somebody tonight will call upon him he shall call upon me who is that you call upon the lord he'll answer your prayer tonight he shall call upon me and i will answer him I will be with him in trouble and i will deliver him i will honor him with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation and show him my salvation is he talking about you there psalm 121 psalm 100 and 21 i'm reading here from verse 3 in psalm 121 reading from verse 3 he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth israel will not will neither slumber nor sleep the lord is thy keeper the lord is thy shade upon the right hand the sun shall not smite thee by day 
nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. How many kinds of evil? Who is going to be protected? Who is going to be kept? The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You're protected. I'm protected. I said I'm protected. And the Lord will preserve you in Jesus' name. Let's come back to John. We're looking at John chapter 17. Number one, preservation from sin and defilement. Number two, protection by our Savior and Deliverer. Number three, prevention of eternal suffering and damnation. You will not perish. Prevention of eternal suffering and Damnation. We're looking at verse 12, John chapter 17. We're looking at verse 12. It says, When I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Negative prophecy will not be fulfilled in your life. You see, Judas is carried out. He didn't remain. He didn't abide. And now he's suffering and there's damnation. But Jesus said, all the others that are willing to abide, all the people here that are willing to abide, willing to abide. I said willing to abide and willing to remain. Then he protects, he prevents eternal suffering and damnation. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And you see there's damnation at the end of the life of sinning. But for those who believe on the Lord, who abide in the Lord, who continue with the Lord, who remain in the Lord, who claim their victory, who enjoy their victory, who testify of their, of their victory and who abide in their victory, you will not be lost in Jesus' name. It says in chapter 5 and verse 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. And then it says, In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. That's where I belong. They that have done good, they that have the grace of God, they whose lives have been totally transformed, and those who abide in the Lord. It says they'll come to the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That's where Judas Iscariot went. I will not follow Judas Iscariot. First Peter, First Peter, I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter, chapter 1, we're reading from verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept, look at that, who are kept, it will keep you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It will be revealed to you. You possess it in Jesus' name. Jude, I'm reading from verse 20. Jude chapter 1, only one chapter. And we're reading here from verse 20. But she beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying 
in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? It means a lot of things. When you are praying by yourself, an inspiration comes, and you pray, and the prayer is flowing, and it's like you never prayed like this before, and the Holy Ghost has taken over. Don't look at time and say, okay, I'm running out of time, I'm going, pray. When the Holy Ghost is interceding, making you to pray. Another time, you're in a congregation like this, like tonight we're going to pray. Are you going to pray tonight? Because there's preservation tonight. There's protection tonight. There's power flowing here tonight. And when we're praying, that one is praying, that one is praying, that one is praying. And the Holy Ghost is teaching us as a church. And we're praying. And every foundation of every evil sin is going to be shaken out of your life. And the weak is going to become strong. And those who are slow, they are going to become fast. And then everything that is a lukewarmness in your life is being taken away. And we have the spirit of prayer. That's not the time to say, well, I don't know whether I'm going to continue or not. When that spirit is moving us to pray, you will pray. Yeah. And then when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost in feeling will come. Yeah. In dwelling will come. Yeah. Empowerment will come. And that Holy Ghost takes over your life and it leads you in prayer. It might be in your house. It might be in the church. It might be in the congregation. When that Holy Ghost has come and is building your praying in the Holy Ghost, you will not restrict and you will not stop. You will pray. Look at that verse 20 again. It says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Look at this. Keep yourselves. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ unto. Say that aloud until eternal life now in verse 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling praise the lord the power of god is here tonight praise the lord the holy ghost is here tonight and praise the lord calvary is going to be mightily manifested in your life tonight in jesus name all that falling and rising, falling and rising tonight is going to stop. Weakness, that's going to stop. Yielding to temptation, that's going to stop. Because now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now amen ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 he wants us to pray and he wants us to pray so that the power of God will move in our lives. The power of God will energize you. And then all the weakness, everything will be totally taken away. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You want victory and you're asking that tonight, it will happen. You want overcoming power, and you're asking for that tonight, it will happen. And you want strength to stand and to be able to overcome every challenge that the world or the devil is bringing your way, it will happen tonight. Because it says, Now unto him that is able, able to deal exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek, according to the power that worketh in us, according to the power that worketh where according to the power that worketh where in us then it says unto him be glory in the church by jesus christ throughout all ages world without end amen 
he gives us power he gives us understanding and he gives us assurance that as we ask him and you want to be strong in the inner man you want to be filled with the fullness of god it's available tonight and because he's there to keep you and you're relying upon him to keep you he will keep you in jesus name Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, here I am reading from verse 20, I'm reading from verse 28, it says, For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And then he says, Now and now and now God behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all, tell me, boldness they may speak thy word as we are going forth you live victoriously you live triumphantly and you'll conquer every challenge in jesus name by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child jesus and when they had prayed like we're going to pray and when they had prayed i said like we're going to pray the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common you have the same power that I have, the same authority I have, all things common, the same confidence I have, the same name of Jesus I have, the same promise of the word of God that I have, and the same victory. We're going to have the victory together in Jesus' name. And then in verse 33, and with great power, with great power, with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace over there great grace over there grace grace over there and great grace was upon them all tonight there's sufficient grace for everyone the sufficient skill for everyone sufficient ability for everyone sufficient enablement for everyone and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be strengthened whosoever shall call on the name of the lord answer is coming from heaven tonight in jesus name jesus prayed and said that the son will be glorified and jesus prayed that god will keep the people that the father has given him and i was talking about you i said he was talking about you i said he was talking about you and the lord is going to answer your prayer tonight let weakness turn to strength tonight will it happen let defeat turn to victory tonight will it happen Stand up and make it happen. Stand up and you tell the Lord tonight, tonight is the night of praying. It's the night of praying for victory. Christ has promised us already. And Christ has given this to us already. And we're telling the Lord, oh Lord, here am I tonight. Here am I tonight. Be glorified in me. Let the Son be glorified in me. Let Jesus be glorified in me. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord tonight. Tell the Lord tonight that Christ will be glorified in your life sinning will come to an end weakness will come to an end falling and rising will come to an end because christ wants to be glorified in your life christ wants to be glorified in your life sin does not glorify god yielding to temptation does not glorify god remaining weak like you have ever been does not glorify god living like the people of the world does not glorify god oh lord be glorified in me tonight be glorified in me tonight be glorified in me tonight let him do it let him do it there's a time of prayer in the time to bring you the bible study to the lord in prayer and to say let that sin come out through me let it work effectually let it work effectively inside my soul inside my heart inside my spirit make me strong make me strong make me strong let your word abide in me and let that word make me strong he'll make you strong tonight he'll make you strong tonight He'll accomplish that tonight of the weakness of character, of the weakness in your behavior, 
all the weakness, the expression of the Christian life, everything will vanish away. Saved, they move on and be sanctified. Saved, move on and be righteous and be holy. Saved, let the Lord preserve you from the subject sin, from habitual sin, from the setting sin. Let it happen. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The seed of God abides in him. The seed of God remains in him. He will not sin. He cannot sin. Because he is of God. Come out of whatever is defiling. That's the evidence of salvation. That's the evidence of conversion. You see those followers of Christ? They were saved. They were born again. And sin did not have dominion over them anymore. You're telling the Lord tonight, let me be a real new creature. Sin not having dominion over me anymore. The flesh not having dominion over me anymore. But habits not having dominion over me anymore. The tradition of the world not having dominion over me anymore. All the ceremonies and all the frivolities not having dominion over you anymore. Clean. Washed. Pure. Holy. Righteous. And the evidence of salvation is there. living for Christ if any man be in Christ a new creature all things are passed away old lifestyle pass away all frauds pass away old fighting pass away all the all the old things are passed away the old worldliness is passed away old grumbling old murmuring everything passed away all things becoming new a new man a new woman a new boy a new girl a new life life of righteousness life of holiness life of purity life of victory the life of the conqueror Old things pass away. All things become new. All things become new. From your heart, to your mind, to your spirit, to your private life, to your family life, to your professional life, to life in the market, Life in the community, all things becoming new. Transparent, transparent righteousness, transparent holiness. Hypocrisy is gone. Living like a chameleon, that is gone. Straightforward, upright, righteous, holy. Trustworthy. Jesus said he kept his own. And he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He keeps his own. He keeps us from sinning. Keeps us from evil. Keeps us in righteousness and holiness. Keeps us walking straight. Talking straight. Acting straight. Behaving straight. He has the power to keep you. All those sins of the past. He has the power to keep you.
He'll keep you from sin. He'll keep you from evil spirit and from every attack, satanic, satanic attack. He keeps. He protects. He preserves. He prevents. He'll prevent evil from coming your way. He'll be watching over you. He'll make a wall of fire around you. That all those evil things will not be able to penetrate anymore. Make your day the day of a new level, a higher level of victory in your life. Victory. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness. Victory over, victory over satanic attack. That all those things come under your feet. They come under your feet. When you are alone by yourself, you are victorious. When you are in the church, you are victorious. When you are in the family, you are victorious. Your mindset is changed. Your heart is changed. Your character is changed. Your outlook is changed. Everything about you is changed. And you are very different from all the people around you in the world. Different. Distinguished. Never to be like them again. Get the victory tonight and go with a permanent victory. Be a conqueror tonight and be more than a conqueror. Be an overcomer tonight. And everywhere you go, demonstrate the power that overcomes. Overcoming the world, overcoming the flesh, Overcoming habitual sinning. Different. Distinguished. Lifted up. Victorious. Conquering. Tell the Lord. Victory all the way through. Every temptation under your feet. Every power of darkness under your feet. You will not be like the worldly people anymore. You will not be like the sinners in the world anymore. Different. Even the unbelievers will know something has happened to you. You are saved. You are righteous. You are saved. You are delivered. You're saved. You're more than a conqueror. Seal the victory. That Satan cannot take you out of the victory anymore. Seal it up. By the blood of the Lamb, seal it up. By the covenant of promise, seal it up. By the pouring of the Spirit upon your life, seal it up. By the confidence you have in Christ and in Calvary, seal it up. And close the back door that's always leading you away from the Lord, leading you away from victory. Close that door, close that door, close that door. So that your victory is permanent. Your conquering is permanent. Lord gives you now a new strength. A new energy, a new consecration, a new devotion, a new power, a new authority, conquering spirit, conquering spirit. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Abide in him. Stay with him. 
live in victory, live in dominion. Let the weakness of the past be turned to strength. Let the grace of God multiply in your life. Grace to be victorious. Grace to live in victory. In the private, in the public, victory. In church, at home, victory. By yourself and with other people, victory. Let the Lord single you out. To be like a Daniel, single you out. To be like a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that will not bend to Nebuchadnezzar, that will not yield to Pharaoh. Let the Lord make you strong, strong in your soul, strong in your spirit, strong in your backbone. Victorious. Victorious. Conquering. You're strengthened. You're empowered. You're energized. And you know, you're going out of the Bible study tonight with a new strength with a new power with a new consecration with a new determination that the things that defeated you before that will happen no more that happens no more in jesus name we pray Victorious children of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Conquering children of God, I said, in Jesus' name we pray. You are going home with victory. You are going home with power. The power of the spirit that conquers will go with you in Jesus' name. The angels of God will clear the way for you. The Spirit of God will go before you. And all those challenges that made you afraid before, all those challenges that made you fall before, from tonight, you're victorious in Jesus' name. Where is the victorious person there? Victorious brother? Victorious sister? Where are they? Praise the Lord. I will not be like before. I said I'm no more like before. I said I'm no more like before. Satan will see you and run. Evil powers will see you and run. And those tempters and temptresses that used to come, the fire in your eyes will drive them away. Sickness forever gone. Oppression forever gone. Yes. Weakness forever gone. Yes. Victory. Yes. Victory. Yes. Victory. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. I thank you for all your people here tonight. I pray, Lord, all those who came in as sinners, make them saved souls right now in Jesus' name. 
all those who came in with condemnation lord i pray the blood of jesus will wipe every condemnation away in jesus name grace for everyone forgiveness for everyone assurance of salvation for everyone and the joy of salvation for everyone in jesus name make everyone real true followers of christ in jesus name and lord i pray that you will break the power of sin from everyone in jesus name any sickness any infirmity there lord by your power by your authority and anointing and command that sickness get out in jesus name all the satanic affliction walking here walking about in your body and then they have come again they have come again be strong in jesus name and all those serpents and scorpions and all those cockroaches and everything that is of evil i drive them away from your life in jesus name the blood of jesus cleanses you the blood of jesus covers you the blood of jesus conquers everything in your life in jesus name lord i pray every brother here every sister here everyone here every leader and every worker and every member and every invitee i pray lord they go out in the strength of the lord in the power of the lord and the victory you have never seen before from tonight you begin to see that victory great will be your victory great will be your triumph great will be your joy and he that is able to keep you from falling go home with you he that is able to keep you standing go home with you and he that abides forever faithful faithfully abiding forever be with you in jesus name and this word that you have heard tonight will keep on working in your heart effectually effectively mightily powerfully in your life in jesus name confirm the victory in every life and make everyone here tonight and everyone that is here tonight make everyone more than a conqueror in jesus name we know it is done we give you the glory and we receive the blessing in jesus mighty name we pray